more difficult. That was too easy, right? Too easy. Now, it takes so long to get to the really complicated ones to run the tape through that I'm not going to do the whole thing. But I want to get up to a little more complicated. Uh, but think of, my, think of your own students when you're talking to them or your own department members or whatever. And uh, are you really communicating? Probably. The union made several demands, including a shorter... Answer this question orally. What was asked for? <laughs> Anybody got it? <laughs> Your answer should have included the... Uh, we're about a... Wait, it's you know, unfeelable right the there on the ground. Let's go back to this one. I like this one. It is? It has not This guy's got a good accent. Your answer should have included these points. A first class seat, 10 a.m. flight. It hasn't got no smell. I mean, a big one can be right on top of this here trap and he won't smell a thing. We call this feature odorless. And you know, a bear can't see this thing. It's painted brown and black, so it's, it's unseeable right there on the ground. It's got camouflage. And another thing, have you been organizing this statement as the speaker proceeds? Have you determined the main point and supporting reasons? Have you been remembering the supporting reasons by the use of one or two key words? You'll now hear the complete statement from the beginning. Now there's some real good advantages to this new bear trap. One good thing about it is, it hasn't got no smell. I mean... You know, I, I would tend, in my own personal world, I would tend to turn that guy off because uh, I wouldn't think he'd know what he was talking about. You know, he sounds like a hillbilly right out of uh, the deep hills of somewhere. But the guy, what he's talking about, he is the super expert probably on uh, bear traps. By the way, I've just thrown in another little bit of static. We'll see how you do it. A big one can be right on top of this here trap and he won't smell a thing. We call this feature odorless. And you know, a bear can't see this thing. It's painted brown and black, so it, it's unseeable right there on the ground it's got camouflage and another thing ain't no bear gonna get away because of this here new trigger when our bear hits that trigger the jaw snaps shut within a tenth of a second faster than i can snap my fingers yes siree this here's a real good bear trap on page 16 of the booklet list the speaker's main point on the top line List his supporting reasons below. Answers? Pardon me? Triggers? In the tenth of a second. Odorless? Brown and black what? Camouflage, keyword. Sits on the ground. Pardon me? Sits on the ground. Sits on the ground as camouflage. All right. Well, we picked up between us. We've got a brilliant mind. You know, we could just get it all together. Well, listen, I won't go any further with that. I wanted you to just get a taste of what they're doing with this effective listening tape. And I wanted you to have a feeling for the audiences and the students. And besides that, I hope and I think that I've heightened your own awareness of your own effective listening. So now as I talk, you will make a special effort to understand everything I say and hear. Uh, everything I say, anyway. I hope I don't hear too much bad things. I, uh, I'm taking this off because I have a, another part of this uh, tape that I want to play a little later on. Not that tape, but another tape a little later on. Well, you know, Webster defines communication as to pass along, to transfer, to give information by talking and writing, and we know that's wrong. We know that there's a whole other area of communications that you have to worry about and be concerned about, and that is your facial expression. Uh, just as an example, uh, uh, is there a Marie in this room? Oh, are you a Marie? No, he is. Oh, oh, geez, oh, I can't use Marie then. Is there a Hazel in the room? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, no. I, uh, how about a Hazel? No Hazels? Okay. Uh, hey, I'm taking uh, Hazel to the drive-in tonight. Okay, I say that one way. All right, now I say it the other way. Hey, I'm taking Hazel to the drive-in tonight. Whole different meaning. One little wink of an eye. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Uh, hey, uh, Garcia, did you hear what I said? How about... Hey, Garcia, did you hear what I said? 
uh, just a slight tonal change changes the whole meaning of what I was uh, trying to say. Uh, it's just something to think about, and uh, you should all be very aware of the facial expression, the tone of voice, and what you're trying to communicate. That's why I'm trying to talk in moderate tones right now, because it's very, but it's very hard for me to do because my normal tone is much louder and much more aggressive than that. But uh, I wanted you to be aware, don't forget, the facial, the body, and also the tonal voice is very important when you communicate. So remember that when you get into these smaller groups that I'm going to break you down to. Please don't be aggressive with each other. Assertive, but not aggressive. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, to, to substantiate that, of the uh, story of the king and the jester, and they were out walking in the garden. And the king and the jester were uh, strolling along. It was a beautiful sunlit day, roses. They were sniffing the roses and feeling very good. And uh, suddenly they walked along, and there, looking at them, right square in the eye was death. And the jester turns and cries in a terrible panic, runs into the king's castle and hides in one of the corners and is weeping and crying in the corner. The king comes in and he says, what's the matter? What happened? And he says, King, oh King, death has grimaced at me. And the king says, oh my God, take my fastest steed, ride to Baghdad. You'll be safe if you ride hard and take it right now. You'll be safe in Baghdad tonight. And the king says, thank you, thank you, King, goes out, gets on the horse and rides off through the desert to Baghdad. And the king goes back out into the garden and he says, Death, why did you grimace at my jester? And Death says, oh, King, that was not a grimace. That was a look of surprise, for I have an appointment with him tonight in Baghdad. So, uh, you know, if you, if you take that to its ultimate conclusion, that, that little story, uh, it sort of immobilizes you in your life because you don't know whether you're riding off to meet Death or whether you're doing the right thing, no matter what you do. But forget that part of it, because that, that gets pretty deep and philosophical. And look at it just from a gesture, from a facial expression on death, and what it meant to that gesture, and how it forced him to ride off to his own destiny, which he would have completely ignored if it hadn't have been for that facial expression. So uh, facial expressions are very important when we're communicating with our fellow man, and so is a voice. And another little story on communications, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is Lenin and Barra were in a big meeting of the Proletburo in Moscow. And uh, Lenin, the meeting was dragging a little bit, and he wrote a note to Barra, and he says, how many people in this country would you say were disloyal to the party? And uh, Barra thought for a minute, and he wrote back uh, 175, approximate. And uh, Lenin looked at it, put an X on the paper, and sent it back to Barra. Barra looked at it, his face went white, he stood up, left the room. The next day, 175 people were executed in one way or another in the Soviet Union. Barra called this, uh, uh, Lenin called Barra in and he said, what the hell have you done? I, I'm just paraphrasing probably what he did say. <laughs> he says, what, what have you done? 175 people executed in our country. And Barra says, uh, no, I got your message. And he says, what message was that? I saw the death X on the uh, note when you send it back to me. I knew what you meant. You wanted me to take them care of them. And Lenin says, no, no. He says, uh, my secretaries, when I uh, deal with them, uh, when I have read and understand a message, I put an X on it. That's all it means. A little misunderstanding. A little, uh, it's like a facial expression or, uh, I hope there aren't any X writers in this group or uh, does the CO put any Xs on his memos? No. Uh, yes. Well, just a little thought there. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, I brought my own civilian coat in here, and I'm sure most of you have seen this, or some of you have. Uh, uh, Bonnie, have you seen this about the coat? No. Pardon me? No. No, good, excellent. Bonnie, I'd like you to help me with this. Uh, the last time I, I did this, by the way, uh, somebody, uh, gave me such poor instructions that I ripped the lining of my coat, so I want to warn you.